And welcome to another edition of our treatment of the International Sunday School lesson. Today's lesson is entitled, Abiding Love. And it's taken from John, the 15th chapter, verses 4 through 17. And it's for November the 11th, 2020, fall quarter, lesson number 10. Now, a little background information. Today's lesson is taken from the imagery that Jesus gave of how that he is the true vine, the individual members of the church, the individual Christians are the branches, and that God the Father is the gardener. And he prunes and trims uh, the vine for maximum benefit and maximum growth, just as as it happens when a gardener is raising and cultivating a vine in the natural. God the Father does the same thing in the growth of the church, of pruning us and trimming us and removing the parts of us that are not beneficial to the growth, to our growth and the growth of the church. And Jesus, when he was uh, using this imagery, was preparing the apostles for the sudden change that would be taking place. He was heading to the cross very shortly, He would be resurrected on that third day. One of their own, Judas Iscariot, would be betraying Jesus and would be cast out from that inner circle, the fellowship, the group of apostles and very shortly would be committing suicide. And Jesus was preparing these apostles. They would be in a growth mode, uh, building the church up from this very select group of followers into a worldwide movement. And this imagery is very important for folks to understand when it comes to the growth of the church, the body of Christ. Okay, John 15 and 4. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit of by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. Now, the King James uses the word abide, which is a translation of the Greek word meno, which means remain, continue, dwell, abide. And that's what we need to really be concerned with is making sure that we continue with God. That we don't start a good work. We don't start down a good path and then turn our back on Christ. And give up and go back. It's not how it's not how you start a race that matters. It matters how you end the race. And it's also important for us to understand from this imagery how that we are not the source of the fruit. As branches 
in this vine, we're only passing along what God gives us. The good that comes out of us does not originate within us. It originates from Christ. We are just a conduit for His righteousness, a conduit for His work, a conduit for His preaching, a conduit for His kindness, a conduit for His love. So we have no reason to feel prideful and arrogant for what we are doing. Now, 15, 5, and 6. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me, and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. It's important for us to understand that if we separate ourselves from Christ, we turn our back on God, that we are good for nothing and we're going to be cast into the fire. Now, I know that they are some good Christian people, people I respect, people I love who believe in eternal security. Once saved, always saved. They believe that once you've made a commitment to Christ, it doesn't matter what else you do past that point, you're still on your way to heaven. But I can't possibly understand the Bible that way, reading verses like verse number six. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up. Get this. They are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. That imagery is so clear, so clear. We need to be attentive and mindful of how we live our lives, making sure that we are in tune with the work of God, in tune with His Spirit, in tune with His righteousness. And we need to continue the work that we started. You know, Paul told the Romans, Romans 6, 11, and 12, In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God and Christ Jesus. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its evil desires. We need to be attentive to holiness. We need to set our mind on heaven. We need to be steadfast in our life, in our work, in our relationship with God. Okay? John fifteen seven and 8. 
If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. Now, there are a couple of things that we want to I want to bring out in these verses. First off is that free heartedness of God and how he is infinitely powerful and able to do whatever needs to be done. We need to enter into prayer with faith in that power of God, with that trust in His good intentions. Ephesians 3, 20 and 21, Now to Him who is able to do immeasurably more than we all will ask or imagine, according to His power, that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. God is able to do more than we could even imagine. So if we got to stay in fellowship, connected to the vine for that to work. Another thing, too, we want to bring out is how this is to God's glory. The good things that happen, the ministry that happens, the folks that are reached, the folks that are saved, the folks that are ministered to, that is all for God's glory. Not our glory, but God's glory. I love what Johann Sebastian Bach and George Frederick Handel put on all of their music. Soli Dio Gloria. It's a Latin term. Glory to God alone. Now, different people have different opinions. But in my opinion, Johann Sebastian Bach was the greatest composer who ever walked the face of this planet. I mean, I love box music. Uh, but Bach, in his humbleness, acknowledged God in all of that massive volume of music that he produced. To glory to God alone. We should approach the work of our hands, the work in the ministry, the things we create, the things that we fix the sales that we make, the suppers we cook, whatever it is, we should be doing all of it to the glory of God. To God be the glory alone. Okay. John 15, 9 and 10. As the Father has loved me, 
so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love. Just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in His love. Friends, let me be, let me reiterate what I was, some of the things I was saying at the beginning. It's important what you do. Your actions have consequences. You may have went to that altar when you were 10 years old and made a profession of faith at that point. But if you lay drunk and beat your wife and run around and carry on and act like a fool your entire adult life and you die without repenting of all that, you're going to bust hell wide open. Your actions matter. This business about signing a card and then you got the insurance and don't have to worry about anything, it does not work that way. It doesn't work that way in the New Testament, did not work that way in the Old Testament. Ezekiel 18.24 But when the righteous man turneth away from his righteousness and committeth iniquity and doth according to his to all the abominations that the wicked man doeth shall he live all his righteousness that he hath done shall not be mentioned in this trespasses that he hath trespassed and in his sin that he hath sinned in them shall he die. It's not how you start the race. It's how you end the race. Okay? Now, John 15, 11, and 13, I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no man than this to lay down his life for his friends. We have to be full of the love of Christ for us to have any kind of impact in this world. For our life to have meaning, we must be full of the love of Christ. And I tell you something else too. And that is the importance of joy. He said that he told them this so his joy would be in them and that their joy may be complete. We need to be joyful in the Lord. Think about the goodness of God. Now, this year, 2020, has had all kinds of challenges to it. There have been things that have just cropped up, and it's almost a joke of all of the weird coincidences that it has jumped up during this year. But we still still need to have the joy of the Lord. We need to think on the goodness of God and rejoice in the Lord. 
You know, brother Nehemiah in Nehemiah 8 and 10, then he said to them, go your way, eat the fat and drink the sweet and send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared for this day is holy unto the Lord. Neither be ye sorry for the joy of the Lord is your strength. We need to be happy in the Lord. You can see some people in church they got such a miserable look and continence on them every time you see them that gives a, the church a bad name. That gives being a Christian a bad name. I mean, why would somebody want to be a Christian if they thought their life was just going to stink if they got saved? We need to latch on to the joy of the Lord. We need to get in that spirit of rejoicing in the Lord. And we need to show that to the world around us so that they know we have something that gets down deep in your soul and gives you a sense of joy and of happiness. Because no matter how tense the world may be getting, no matter what the challenges of the day are, we're on our way to heaven. We have a home and glory waiting for us. We have a Savior on the right hand of God the Father who loved us enough to hang on a cross and pay the penalty for our sins and gave us free forgiveness for all of our sins and empowered us with the Holy Ghost and has made a difference in our life and the challenges and the things that we were into begin to fall off as we begin to grow in the Lord. And that's enough, that should be enough to fill us with that joy of the Lord, which is our strength. Okay. 15, 14, and 15. Ye are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. So we have that intimate, personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ to where he would call us friends. Okay? Now, concluding thoughts. Let me just reiterate. You know, and I'm not going to argue or debate with people about it, but don't think that you can live any way you want to live and not worry about anything and die and go to heaven if you've lived an ungodly life just because you came up to the preacher and shook his hand and signed a little card and then went out and lived any way you want to, that doesn't work that way. Christianity does not work that way. Now, am I saying you got to be sinless to make it to heaven? Absolutely not. 
you can be saved and be um, have all kinds of flaws in your personality. I'm living proof of that. I've got all kinds of flaws in my personality. But you got to be heading that way. You've got to try. You've got to uh, be attentive to following the Lord. You can't turn your back on God and go out and do anything you want to do and end up being in heaven. It does not work that way. And the scriptures are very clear about that. The scriptures today were very clear about that. If you are a branch, now keep in mind now, a branch is actually has been part of that vine. This is not a fake branch. This wasn't a piece of wood that was laying off to the side. This is a branch that was hooked to the vine. It can be severed away and thrown into the fire. Okay? So, be attentive. Be vigilant. Keep yourself heading that way. Well, friends, good Lord willing, I'll be back with you next weekend.